no baked cookies, reusable bags in the garden, all that and a whole lot more coming up today on a special Earth Day edition of the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden. This program was funded by the following. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. Dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151 acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting food to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Holly Beard. This show is dedicated to the average gardener, simple home living, and using what you already have. Since Earth Day is coming up, we decided to do a special Earth Day edition of the show. You're going to learn more about Earth Day throughout the show, and right now we're going to start by making some no-big Eskimo cookies probably wondering what cookies has to do with Earth Day. But the nice thing about these cookies is you don't have to run your stove, so you don't run your electric or your gas for a long period of time, so that way it saves resources. So what we have here um, to make these cookies is we have some butter. We have three quarters cups of butter and three quarter cups of sugar. You wanna make sure the butter is softened. You wonder, how do I soften my butter? You simply just leave it out on your counter. You leave it overnight. It just takes a little while for it to go from refrigerator temperature to room temperature. So what you want to do is you want to take your mixer and this doesn't require a lot of electricity at all you just want to cream them together so you just simply put them in your mixer turn your mixer on and turn on to a pretty medium medium speed so that it mixes together quite nicely and you just want to let it do that until it gets well combined. You can also mix this by hand if you want to. I just like to have you can mix it at the same time. Now that it's well combined, what you want to do is you want to take your spatula and you want to scrape down the sides of the bowl so that when you add your other ingredients, they will mix in with the butter and the sugar. Now the nice thing about these cookies is these are ingredients that you probably already have on hand or you can just pick up at the store, at any any store. They're not anything that you have to find special. So now what you want to add in is you want to add in some vanilla. You want to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. So if you ever get confused about which one is a teaspoon or tablespoon, tablespoon is a bigger one. You think, you know, table, and then teaspoon is a smaller one. You think of a teacup. So go ahead and add that. Then you want to add a tablespoon of water. And I have this handy measuring cup, so I'm just going to toss that in there. Then you need to add three tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. You can find that in the baking section of your local grocery store. Oh, looks like I'll have just enough here. Maybe a little more. Now, I'll tell you this, when you're using cocoa powder and you're mixing it with a mixer, don't turn your beater on high right away or turn it up. You want to do that slowly and so that it's well combined. So, because otherwise you're going to get powder all over the place. So I'm going to start on low 
and let it combine and then we'll add the other ingredients. So now we've scraped it on the side of the bowl, we've got this mix up here, and it's really well combined. So we're gonna turn that off, and I'm gonna, again, scrape it off the mixer here. Okay, then you wanna add two cups of rolled oats. So you take your measuring cup, any measure. Okay. Side. Then you get them to start mixed in as well. I'm just gonna give it a quick scraping because I see there's some stuff on. Now the nice thing about these cookies is that they go, you put them in the fridge so they kind of, once you get them formed, you put them in the fridge. So you could make these for like a potluck, you know, make them the night before and then they're ready to go um, the next day. And they, they are very tasty and obviously easy to make. Okay, so now everything is well combined. Now what you want to do is, well before any cooking or baking project, you always want to wash your hands. But you want to make sure your hands are obviously clean because you want, you're going to roll these into, into little balls. So I'm just going to go make sure my, my hands are washed. I'm going to get my mixer out of here so I have more room. So now you want to take a shallow tray, cookie sheet, whatever I just use this glass baking dish that I have. Then you want to take some powdered sugar. There's about a third of a cup in here. If you have a plate or a shallow dish like this because you're going to roll um, the little cookie balls in there. So you want to take about an inch or so size ball. You should get about 30 to 36 of them and then you just form them like that. And then you just roll them in the powdered sugar. If you don't want to use the powdered sugar, you can just do this, leave them, put them in there as is because they are going to firm up, but this makes it a little bit less sticky. So I'm just finishing up the last one here, and it looks like we got about 25, and I did kind of variations in sizes. As you can see, the larger they are, the less you're going to get, and the smaller they are, the more you're going to get. Um, so now you want to put these in the fridge to cool, kind of makes them set up a little bit. I mean, obviously, you can just eat them as they are, but um, we're going to go ahead and slide them in the fridge. So you just go ahead and slide those in your fridge for a couple hours, pull them out, and enjoy. One thing that's fun to do on Earth Day is get kids involved. If you teach kids early about Earth Day and sustainability, it's going to become a habit for them and something that they're going to enjoy throughout their life. So one thing that they can make and you can help them make is um, little tin can herb pots. Um, these are fun to make. You just take a tin can, you clean it out obviously, and then you clean it off. You want to make sure you take the label off and then you can paint them. You can have the kids help you paint them. Or if you're doing this for yourself, maybe you can just spray paint them. And there's lots of different ideas for how you can paint them. Then what you want to do is you want to take and put a hole in the bottom. You can use a drill, you can take a screwdriver and a hammer. We discovered our can opening here works pretty well. You just take it and pop a hole in it like that. 
Uh, for the larger ones, I recommend two or three holes. For the smaller ones, just one hole is fine. And then you fill them with dirt and plant your herbs. While I'm doing that, I'm going to talk about the history of Earth Day. Um, Earth Day was was thought up by Senator Gaylord Nelson. He is a senator from the state of Wisconsin. And in 1963, he had had some concerns about the earth. He felt that people weren't making a priority to worry about the earth or the plants or the animals on the earth. So he went to the president and he spoke with him about it. And the president went around state to state talking about the earth. But that still wasn't good enough for, for the Senator Nelson. He wanted, he wanted more. So in 1969, he said on April 22nd, 1970, we're gonna have an Earth Day. And he decided every year that it was gonna be a day where people focus on you know thinking about the earth and he got college students involved and other kids he had it printed in magazines so that the teachers would encourage the kids so that's basically the history of Earth Day. So I've got my soil in there. Just tap it on anywhere just a little bit more. Ooh. And if you wanted to, you could make like a whole row of these and give them as a gift. So the first thing I want to plant is some thyme. And I'm just going to move the soil over a little bit and drop a couple of seeds in there. The nice thing about um, certain herbs is you can grow them year-round. We grow herbs year round in our kitchen. We have a nice, pretty window that we can, that we um, that we grow year round. So that's something that's kind of nice. So I got that thyme planted there. And then I'm gonna plant some lemon balm in this one. This would actually make a great Mother's Day gift, maybe, um, Right now, since it's we're still about a month away from Mother's Day, you can make these around now, and then the herbs will have a nice start, and then you can give them as, as a gift for Mother's Day. That's always an idea. All right, so some lemon balm. Let's disperse that throughout. And then you always want to, it's always a good idea to water them in. So just take a little watering tray or a little watering thing here. And then they're set up ready to go and then what you can do is you can take um, some labels or something so you know what you're growing obviously. and. Right on there. So we got the time, we'll just slide that in there. And then this was lemon balm. So there you have it, a fun craft that is earth friendly and reuses those soup cans you have laying around. Another way to be more earth friendly is to get rid of these, the plastic bags that every store in the world gives you when you purchase their merchandise. Well how do you get rid of them? Well you can go to the reusable bag route. Now the nice thing about these are they're very inexpensive and um, some businesses will actually take a few cents off your purchase if you bring your own reusable bag in. Also, they're a few 50 cents to a dollar if you want to purchase them and businesses most times or at least sometimes will run promotions around Earth Day and will give these to you if you purchase enough of their product. 
Well, our good friend Larry Hall from Minnesota is using them as another creative way of growing produce in the garden. Well, what he does is he'll go and look at the label of them at the store. And if it says you, um, made with recycled polypropylene, he'll take them and put soil in them and grow product in them. Well, why, why is it just the recycled polypropylene? Well, that's what growing bags are made out of, which is becoming more and more popular in the urban setting. And the benefit to the polypropylene bags is the roots of your plant don't get root bound, which means they don't hit the side of the pot and continue to go around. They'll hit the side of the, the bag and then what they'll do is they'll get air trimmed and they'll put on more fibrous roots to maximize and use more beneficial uh, pro, uh, items in your soil. So we're going to do what Larry does and plant some red potatoes in our recycled reusable bag. And you can just fill it up with some potting soil. It's really easy. And this is an excellent application if you don't have access to a ground garden. You can set these on your porch, patio, deck. Uh, if you're in a condo situation, it's really good. And like I said, these are like 50 cents or a dollar. And, and after the end of the season, you can just fold them up, put them in your closet, and you can use them again next year. So we're gonna fill it about half full. And we'll take our red potatoes and just put them in the center there. I'm going to use three of them here. And now we're going to fill the rest of it up with soil. Now if you want more information on what Larry's doing in Minnesota and all the other creative inventions that he has to help gardeners and to be more successful, we'll have a link for his channel underneath in the show notes. So another useful way for reusing your reusable bag if your reusable bag can't be used anymore. You've seen us do a lot of repurposing on the show, but with any repurposing job, there's a certain amount of tools that you're going to need. Here's a variety of tools that we use that we would recommend you have if you don't already have them to do repurposing jobs uh, whether you see on the show or you want to do yourself. Now we all have a bucket of fasteners, screws, bolts, uh, nuts, washers. Now that's a good thing to have. Also a good set of drill bits or screw heads. Uh, that's also a, a very crucial aspect of repurposing. A razor blade knife. Drill bits, whether large or small, if you can get a good set of drill bits, that'll help any job. A wire cutter. Pliers screwdrivers, uh, wrench, hammers, uh, whether you're going to put fence posts in, in the garden or you need to attach a fastener. This one we found on the road coming home from work. That's a $25 hammer that somebody lost. So that sometimes you get fortunate and find stuff like that. Good tape measure, a pair of scissors. If you can get in a, a multi-purpose tool, that can be very handy. Always you can always can use a stapler depending on what the project is. Uh, some string. String is always good no matter what you're doing, trellises or anything in the house. Uh, heavy duty pocket knife is good for harvesting produce uh, if you're of age. Uh, drills, whether it's battery operated or electric, either one is good. And when it comes to saws, there's several different types of saws that you can use. Uh, miter saw works good for small items. Hacksaw if you're going to cut some metal. Uh, bow saw if you're going to do a lot of wood cutting for trellises in the garden. Now, if you don't have some of these tools, you can purchase them at yard sales, rummage sales, online. They're very inexpensive. Or you may even have a neighbor or friend that has some of these. And you can ask to borrow them and trade them some tomatoes or peppers come in the middle of the season when they're producing heavily. Some of the items that you're going to need if you're going to do a lot of repurposing and reusing of items. There are many different household cleaners that you can purchase. Um, most of them contain a lot of chemicals and I know a lot of people are trying to get away from that. Um, if you look at the more natural ones, they're definitely going to cost you a lot more money. So you can actually make your own natural cleaners with items that you have around the house. One thing that I recommend is making an all-purpose cleaner and all you need for it is some vinegar, just some plain old white vinegar, um, some tap water, and if you have some 
lemon or orange extract that's going to give it a nice uh, nice scent. So the first thing you do is you get a bottle like this. This is um, just about a liter and or almost four cups. So what you want to do is first you want to put the vinegar in and you want to add about a half a cup of vinegar. And then what you want to do, oh, then you want to add the water. And then you just add water to dilute it till it's pretty full because you're going to shake it up. So you obviously want room in the bottle to shake it up. I use a funnel because I'm not so good with the, with the pouring. Then, for a little extra added scent, you just add a little bit of lemon extract. I'm gonna add about a quarter of a cap, if that. That's gonna give it a nice lemony scent. So then you just get that all in your bottle. And you shake it up to combine it. And you can buy these bottles at the dollar store, um, I'm sure the grocery store has them too. I find them the cheapest at the dollar store and they're nice to use reusable bottles that you can also recycle them if they start to wear out. So there's the household cleaner. One thing I wanted to mention real quick is that if you are interested in sign up for an email list, we do have an email list. We'll be sending out weekly emails and you can find that information at the end of the show. Also, if you're looking for any of the recipes we have listed in any of our shows, you can contact us on our Facebook page or on our, through our email which is listed at the end of the show. So um, so have, here you go, you have your easy household vinegar non-toxic cleaner. Well that's all the time we have. I really hope you enjoy watching the show as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. And as you can see there's many different great ideas out there that you can use to help celebrate Earth Day and help preserve the Earth. One quick tip, last tip I have for you here is purchase some reusable cups. Something that you can do on your part to help keep those styrofoam and plastic bottles out of the landfill and you can even um, get them for a minimal amount of money. From all of us here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, I'm Holly Baird reminding you to take a child gardening with you and help start growing those memories. This program was funded by the following. At DollarSeed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit DollarSeed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. DollarSeed.com. What could be healthier? Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151-acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting FOOD to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org. The show never ends on our Facebook page. Keyword, Wisconsin Vegetable Gardeners. Like the page and continue the discussion there. You can now follow us on Twitter, see what we're up to and what we're doing at the garden. The address, the W-I Veg Gardener, G-A-R-D-E-N-R. -E you can email us at the W-I Veg Gardener at gmail.com. 
with your questions, comments, or suggestions about the show. 